When it comes to a ski trip to South America, conditions can be hit or miss. But when you find yourself in the midst of one of those rare, perfect days, the experience is nothing short of magical. This past August, our trip to Valle Nevado in Chile was a testament to that. We didn't just get lucky with a typical storm, we hit the jackpot during one of the best seasons South America had seen in over a decade. The result wasn't just a good powder day, it was one of the most exciting days on skis we've ever done. So what exactly made this day so special? And what does it say about the South American skiing experience as a whole? Well, in this video, we'll take you through all the details of that day, the specific factors that made it so memorable, and all the pros and cons that came with it. And yes, there were some notable cons. Let's jump right into it. The first thing that blew us away about this day was the quality of the powder. Anyone who's chased powder days before knows that not all powder is created equal. You might have experienced incredible blower powder before in places like Utah or New Mexico, but the snowy skied in Valle Nevado took it to another level. It was unlike anything we had ever skied or ridden on in bounds before, so dry and weightless it almost felt like floating. Every turn felt silky smooth, and the lightness of the snow made it nearly effortless to navigate. In fact, the snow was so light that it almost felt like you weren't skiing through it, but rather skimming the surface of something far more ethereal. The kind of powder where, even after countless laps, your legs don't even feel fatigued. You could easily make it through the day without the usual burn you'd expect from a long powder session, and even if you weren't on true powder skis, you could still have an incredible time. This was one of the rare powder days where even if you brought your narrow East Coast skis, you'd still have a good time. If you want a good reference for how smooth and effortless the experience was, take a look at how stable our video footage is. But the snow quality was only part of the equation. What made this day even more insane was the sheer quantity of snow that had accumulated. Official reports placed the storm's total at just over two feet, but the unique, exceptionally light and dry texture of the powder made for circumstances that felt far higher than that. We found ourselves skiing and riding through chest-deep snow in certain circumstances, and at times, the powder was so blower that it even reached our faces. The sensation of being immersed in snow this high, yet still moving effortlessly, is hard to convey in just how extraordinary it is. It was the kind of day where you could literally choke on powder if you weren't careful. This is a situation that, while laughable, just added to the oh surreal nature of the experience. But what was just as awe-inspiring as the skiing and riding itself was the visual aesthetic nice. of the day. You basically blew through the snow as if you were a motorboat on smooth waters, leaving a literal Dude, wake of powder know. behind you. Every turn you made kicked up clouds of snow so fine it hung in the air, creating a trail of white mist that followed your every move. Watching this unfold across the slopes was mesmerizing, and the vibe of the day was elevated even more by the weather conditions. Yes, that's right, the weather was absolutely perfect. The storm had cleared out just as the day was beginning, leaving behind bluebird skies that were so perfectly timed it was like it was almost out of a movie. This meant no sunbaked snow to contend with. The slopes remained soft and powdery throughout the day. The clarity of the skies also brought out the full majesty of the Andes Mountains, their jagged peaks dusted with the same layer of fresh snow that had just fallen in the resort. Now, you're probably thinking that we're tuning this place's horn quite a bit at this point, but this was literally a picture-perfect day that looked like it belonged on the cover of a ski magazine. If Valle Nevado knew anything about anything, they should have had their media team all over the opportunity. But it wasn't just the snow and beauty that made this day so awesome. Oh, Adding to boy. the experience was the lack of crowds. Normally in the US or Canada, a powder day like this would be swarmed with skiers and riders trying to gobble up all the fresh snow, but on this specific day, something incredible happened. The resort remained virtually empty. The access road to Valle Nevado, which winds up nearly 8,000 feet from Santiago to the resort, was basically impassable due to the storm. Even many of the locals who had chains were unable to make the journey up to the resort. As a result, the slopes remained remarkably uncrowded even into the afternoon. To put it another way, if you've skied at any major North American resort, you know the deal. A big dump of snow brings big crowds, and fresh tracks are usually gone within the first hour. But at Valle Nevado, this day was different. With so few people on the mountain, we were able to make fresh lines all day long. If we wanted to, every run could feel like a first descent, and by mid-afternoon, we were still skiing untouched lines. Even better, the lack of skiers and riders meant minimal lift lines. At no point during the day did we wait longer than a few minutes to get back up the mountain, a far cry from the sometimes 30-minute or even hour-long lines you'd face at a U.S. resort on a powder day. 
And best of all, with the snow so fun and effortless to glide through, we didn't even need the time to catch our breath before diving back into the snow. It's also worth mentioning the almost hilarious effect that the storm, and perhaps just the well above average snow base, had on some of the infrastructure around the resort. Since the storm ended literally immediately before the ski day started, the resort didn't have time to plow the roads at all, and on that walk from the condo to the lifts, everything was covered in an uninterrupted blanket of white. Entire cars, which had presumably been casually parked in the lot a few days before, were now completely swallowed by snow. In fact, one could argue they now looked more like massive marshmallows than motor vehicles. It was a good thing we took a shuttle ride up to the resort, because getting those cars out of there must have been one heck of an experience. Also, the exceptionally high snow base resulted in some rather comically low RFID gates and video surveillance cameras. You could literally knock your head on one of these if you weren't careful. On top of that, the resort's chairlifts were obviously loading at a lower height than usual due to the massive snow base, and you had to be really careful not to clip your boot on the clearance between the seat and the ground while loading the lift. However, in certain situations, the storm's effects on Vine Nevado's infrastructure were less than comical. Most notably, the intensity of the storm exposed weaknesses in the resort's power supply. The grid struggled to handle the demands of the resort, resulting in a series of power outages throughout not just the day, but the majority of the week following the storm. And the problem wasn't just confined to the slopes. Our condo lost power for several hours as well, which, while not a true catastrophe, was a really frustrating inconvenience. The condo did admittedly have an emergency backup generator, which came in very handy, but it was confined to a single outlet, and it didn't cover everything in the apartment. Since we brought all our groceries up from Santiago, we had to use our balcony as an improvised refrigerator to keep our food from spoiling. This did work generally fine, but some of our produce froze overnight, and we had to throw it out. In addition, since we had an electric stove in the condo, we couldn't cook anything until the power went on. In fact, one of the power outages happened while we were cooking food, so we were left wondering whether we would have to throw out an entire meal that was already in the process of being cooked. Luckily, in that specific outage, the power went back on about half an hour later. But another big downside of the power issues was the effect on the resort's lift infrastructure. There wasn't enough electricity for the grid to power both all the lifts and all the buildings, and so two of the best lifts, the Andes Express High Speed Quad and the Vine Nevado Gondola, were out of commission for not just the day after the storm, but the entire week after that. This meant we had to rely entirely on slow chairs and surface lifts to access all of the mountain's terrain. This obviously wasn't the end of the world by any stretch of the imagination, but it took more time and effort than it typically would to get to the majority of runs at the resort. Another significant challenge that came with the storm was the heightened avalanche danger. With so much snow falling in such a short period of time, there was a real risk of avalanches, particularly in the off-piste areas. The new snow hadn't fully bonded with the weak base below, creating unstable conditions on some of the more exposed and steeper slopes. Even within the resort boundaries, there were sections that looked visibly sketchy, with cornices and ridges showing signs of potential slides. On this monumental powder day, we made sure to bring our avalanche beacons with us, not because we were planning to venture far into the backcountry, but because the conditions were that unpredictable. This wasn't the type of day where you could casually dip into the side country terrain without a second thought. And since this isn't North America, no one at the resort was going to stop you from going off the trail. So. With all the ups and downs, was this record-breaking powder day at Vine Nevado worth it? Absolutely. Sure, we experienced power outages, slower lifts, and very real avalanche risks, but these modest drawbacks were more than offset by even just the snow conditions alone. This was the kind of day that reminds you why skiing and riding are such oh special, addictive sports. The combination of pristine snow, uncrowded slopes, and stunning weather made it a day that will live in our memories for years to come. While they don't come often, if you ever get the chance to be in the Central Andes during one of these rare storms, take it. Just make sure to bring your avalanche gear and be prepared for a few curveballs along the way. Oh my. As with the rest of our South America content, we have to give a massive shout out to the crew from Peak Casa Chile 2024. It's thanks in large part to their support that this video was even possible. From leading our first trip only six months ago to running at least five trips this upcoming winter, we cannot understate how thankful we are for those of you who have signed up for making this incredible growth possible. If you're looking to visit some world-class ski resorts next winter and want an incredible crew to do it with, check out our Peak House 2025 trips using the link in the description below. 
For more information on South America and over 100 destination ski resorts around the world, check out peakrankings.com. See you for the next one.